Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to give you the rundown for how to set up and play Resto Druid for Mythic Plus for Dragonflight Patch 10.2. For the first time in several seasons, we're seeing Resto Druids reaching the top spots of Raider IO, and I'm happy to see many long-term mains returning, as well as new players picking up the class. Although many things with Druid stay the same, there are actually quite a few gameplay changes with the new tier set and addition of new talents such as Grove Guardians. Resto Druid excels at consistent, powerful healing, both in single target and in parties. The damage of cat form abilities like Rip and Bite have also been buffed significantly, so cat weaving as a Druid feels better than it's been in a long time. Druid also has a pretty diverse utility kit. You can change around the class tree quite a lot to fit the exact situation. I would say Druid's biggest weakness involves how many setup globals that you have to do to do good healing, and overall just a reliance on those heal over time effects. This causes Druid to be one of the more proactive healers, meaning you need to be prepared somewhat before the damage hits. It can be more difficult for newer players, but with some practice and an effective UI, Druid can be a really, really strong healer. Druid is also a great addition to the team. It brings Mark of the Wild and Combat Res, two of the most impactful things that you can bring in Mythic Plus, and many other Druid specs have dropped off quite a bit in popularity this patch. One last thing to note about Druid, it doesn't require to do any DPS to mobs for its basic healing rotation, unlike the other two popular healers this season, Discipline Priest and Mistweaver. Before we get into gameplay, I'll quickly go over the way you should set up your character. It's not super important, but people do ask. Your race choice, I prefer playing Night Elf. Shadow Meld is very powerful. You can dodge certain targeted mechanics when they're being cast on you. You can also use it to simply leave combat if you need to drink to get mana or resurrect an ally. As for gear, you want to prioritize high item level pieces with haste. In hierarchies, for DPS and survivability, you'll see people stacking verse after haste. But while you're still gearing up, it's not super important. All stats are good, and I wouldn't stress out about what you're getting as long as it's your highest item level option. As for trinkets, you have a wide array of options, depending on what you're looking for. I prefer one stat stick, something like Pips, Sea Star, or Genosaur Blood, alongside a powerful single target trinket, either Voodoo Totem as a big heal, or Leaf as a big shield. There are also a ton of good DPS trinkets available. I got a 489 Vessel from a Taldazar in my Druid. It does like 10% of my damage in some dungeons. It's absolutely crazy. There are also a lot of other good options as dungeon trinkets and raid trinkets for damage. I'd mainly focus on healing-centric gear though while you're gearing up, but as you get more comfortable, or if you just want to be a monkey, you can definitely try out whatever good DPS trinkets that you get. For consumables, I use Howling Runes, Int Food, and Versatility Files. These are all extremely cheap this season. I'd just buy a big stack of each. Even if you're only doing lower keys, I think it's worth it. As for enchants, there's just too many to list in this video. They also can get quite expensive. When you're happy with your gear and you're ready to shell out some gold, I'd pull up just one of the top Resto Druids on Raider.io to make sure that you grab everything. When it comes to embellishments, none of them are critical to your build. Many top druids are actually using different things. If I had to pick two, it'd be Elemental Lariat Neck and Verdant Tether Ring. You should decide the embellishments based on the items that you're able to get a hold of though. Let's say you get a strong necklace from your weekly vault or the raid early on. It's going to be way more impactful to craft a piece on a different slot rather than just getting the neck because that's the bis embellishment. Most of them are only about 1% gain to your healing or damage either way, so it doesn't really matter what you choose. Now that you're mostly set up, we can talk a bit about talents. Keep in mind the new talent system is very fluid. The best setup is going to change depending on what dungeon you're in, the affixes, the group comp that you're in, and so on. Especially the druid tree, it's one of the most complex class trees of any healer. It gives you some really powerful options, but everything comes at a cost. I see many druids running without Skull Bash with no interrupts. This is an option if you're a total beginner who you know you're never going to use it, or you have a really organized group that has everything under control. 
For the 90% in the middle though, I think the added interrupt for dungeons is going to be invaluable and you should get in the habit of using an interrupt as a druid as soon as possible. Nature's Vigil and Innervate are both missing from this build. It may seem surprising, but Druid is actually really mana efficient and doesn't even really need the Innervate much, even if you're pretty aggressively chain pulling. Nature's Vigil is an alright talent. It was nerfed heavily after Season 1 and isn't really worth the two-point investment if you're not taking Innervate. Rejuvenation is also a much less important part of our kit, so Improve Rejuve is something that we're skipping as well. I decided to omit the defensive talents, uh, mainly Thick Hide for lower keys, just to make sure that we can get everything we need. In higher keys though, you're definitely going to see Druids running this, and you're going to have to make sacrifices somewhere to get Thick Hide in order to live just the very heavy damage in the one-shots. For starting off though, I wouldn't worry about it. There is one additional unspent point that I didn't use in this tree. Use it wherever you see fit. Usually it's for an affix. Let's say you need hibernate for incorporeal, or you maybe want typhoon for sanguine, or so on. The spec tree can also be changed a little, but it has fewer options than the class tree for sure. This is because a lot of the talents are raid talents that do little to nothing in M+. Budding Leaves is the one exception. It's really powerful and I wish you could get points into it, but there's just so much heavy competition for these bottom capstone talents. This is the build that I'd probably recommend for starters, but feel free to experiment and try different options. Uh, sometimes I try and sneak points into Budding Leaves. This is simply just meant as a starting point for you to learn. Definitely not an end-all be-all solution. As for rotation, I always prefer to think of druid healing in terms of layers. Your main priority layer is going to be maintaining your F-flow on the ground, keeping your two life blooms out, and then using Scenarian Ward and Adaptive Swarm on cooldown. Use these with high as uptime as possible, unless there's literally no damage that you need to heal. You can also say that your last charge of Grove Guardians, or your first, however you want to look at it when you're capped on charges, is in this category. Remember that Grove Guardians isn't on the GCD and you can use it in any form, so just throw one out anytime you're capped on charges just to help keep a head on damage. This may seem like a lot of maintenance with five different spells you have to maintain, but it's a really potent backbone that's also very mana efficient and will do quite a bit of healing with very little cost. As more damage starts to come out, your big heavy hitters are going to be your regrowth with clear casting procs and your wild growth. Both of these can be empowered with swift mend. Remember that regrowth will apply a hot to anyone with life bloom, so when possible try and use it on somebody without life bloom so that you get multiple of those regrowth hots going. You can use swift mend to empower either regrowth or wild growth depending on if you need the single target or the group healing. And then last in this category, I'd also include spending those remaining Grove Guardians charges. These little guys are powerful, but they do take a while to kick in. They last for 10 seconds, and so you don't necessarily want to wait until you're buried in damage before you use them. The name of the game is just to stay ahead of the damage. Just send the guys out as you see that you're needing to use your direct heals and as you start to fall behind. As the final layer of defense, once all your good stuff is used, you're mainly just spamming regrowth. The hope here is that you already have a bunch of hots rolling, and then the direct healing from regrowth will help rein things under control. The important thing to note here is the lack of rejuve. In general, you shouldn't be using rejuvenation much in M+. It seems very counterintuitive if you've been playing Druid for a long time, but with low mastery and not much synergy with your talents or your tier set, rejuve just isn't that powerful of a button. It still can be used to pre-hot big damage events or if you have nothing to cast and you're moving around, but in a normal rotational sense, it shouldn't really be thought about much. It's similar to something like Renew from Priest or Essence Font from Mistweaver. The button's there, but it's just not mana efficient and doesn't do that on-demand healing that you often need. Lastly, I want to go over some common questions and important talent interactions for Druid. One of the most common ones is where you should be placing your life blooms for optimal use for the photosynthesis talent. 
Previously, you would always want one on yourself, so that passive kicks in to increase your hot rates. But because a bunch of your healing doesn't come from hots this patch, and also you do gain a lot from life bloom proccing verdancy, it doesn't matter really where the life blooms are. The most important thing is they're just on somebody, and you want to prefer people that need the healing. So don't always force either like one on yourself or one on your tank. Just try and be flexible with the situation and put them on whoever needs healing while maintaining them at as high of an uptime as you can. Unbridled Swarm is a really powerful spell, but it's not super intuitive for a beginner druid. I'll try my best to explain it. When you cast it, it applies three stacks, or it'll add three stacks if it already is on the target to a max of five. Then when the buff runs out, it loses a stack, then bounces to a new target. But when it does that, it has a 60% chance to duplicate and go to two targets. This means the goal is you want to try and get a high number of stacks, either four or five, then have them duplicate so then you have two big stacks, since duplicating a four stack buff is going to continue on much longer than just a one stack. This means if you're selecting targets wisely, i.e. stacking the buff on the same person and using your unbridled swarm on cooldown, you can maintain it on high stacks with basically your whole party throughout the dungeon. There is a very helpful weak aura. I know this might seem complicated, but most druids just use the weak aura for high keys. I'm going to link that in the description. What it'll do is it'll just highlight the ideal target for where you should use the adaptive swarm. For Convoke and Flourish, both are pretty weak, but they can be used every minute. This means you should just be sending them out to stay ahead over and over. Don't hold on to these buttons, expecting them to dig you out of a bad situation. Instead, you want to use them to prevent those situations from happening in the first place. As an addition, Convoke in cat form is also a good option for single target damage. It doesn't help a whole lot for AoE. Mainly with Convoke, you just sort of want to use it on cooldown, where, you know, if there's no healing, you can just pop into cat form, do some damage, and if you need to heal, you can just send it for a heal. The DPS rotation for Druid revolves mainly around just keeping all of your damage over time effects with as high of an uptime as you can. So in general, whether it's AoE or single target, you want to keep that Sunfire up. And then if there's either a single target mob or pick a priority mob in AoE, you want to keep Moonfire, Rip, and Rake on that mob. On single target, you use Shred to build combo points in cap form, and on AoE, you use Swipe. Just remember that Swipe is soft capped, meaning it does reduce damage on high numbers of targets. So even on like a big pull, it's going to be doing very little damage. You always want to be spending your combo points, reapplying those dots on priority mobs, even in bigger pulls. The bulk of your damage is going to be from your dots, any DPS trinkets you have, and then your single target convokes for bosses. Don't overthink trying to spam stuff like Swipe or like Wrath. They're just such a small part of your overall damage, you're probably going to do more harm than good worrying about spamming those builders. That covers most of the important parts of my Rest of Druid guide for patch 10.2. This should help get you started to time keys all the way to plus 20 and beyond. If you have any questions or suggestions, I'd be happy to read them in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for future M plus content going into the War Within. Happy keying. Easy. Pira's the healer. Pira's girl. Oh.